All right, we've got Joey repainting the front of the building. This is after one coat. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? Check it out. He, he rented this lift so that he could get up. Oh, he's going to show it off. Look at him. Vamoose. Vamoose. Here we go. Here we go. It's like he's at Carowinds. <laughs> Say wee, Joey. <laughs> Yeah, he's not gonna do hands up. We're all scared to death of heights. So basically, you could paint this from the ground, but he didn't do that because we have a little problem where we put those letters on it. Like we, the way we did it was five years ago, we painted it blue. This was a big, this is like a slip cover. Basically, the front of this building at one time was was old school like that one over there. That's an old Coca-Cola bottling plant over there. So at one point, this building was like that. And then sometime likely in the late 50s or the early 60s, they redesigned the front of the building. So they put in those aluminum windows and they put in the flagstone on the ground there. And they, uh, they did the little bump ins on both sides. And they put in this orange, I guess that's flagstone too or whatever it's called. They put in that orange uh, stonework. And then they put this big slip cover on the top of the building. And so what that is, is it's plywood with a, with a real thin sheet of aluminum on the front of it, or tin or something, I don't know. And uh, it was just white. It looked like a big movie screen, pretty ugly. And so when we bought the building, we repainted that blue just because we thought it looked nice. And we, what we were trying to do, it was this big white marquee looking thing. So what we were trying to do was kind of minimalize it so we kind of painted it a light blue so that it kind of blend in with the sky a little bit and not make it look as big and ugly which which worked and so then the city will let you put up a sign of course but it has to be a certain size so we couldn't put like a huge a huge sign because they wouldn't let us so they want you to put like a little square sign it has to be a certain number of square feet so the biggest our sign could be was 40 square feet you get one square foot for each foot of store for, of uh, frontage so it's a, the building's 40 feet wide so we were able to put up a 40 square foot sign so we put that sign up several years ago and it's we designed it's two feet tall and 20 feet long because we just wanted it to be real big that was about as big as we could get it you can see like here the neighbors you know they were able they just did a little square one you can see nobody really does a big one because you're not allowed to so we've got a big one because we made it thin right so two by 20 and uh so we after we painted it we drilled holes and mounted all of those letters because we kind of wanted it to look old school because the building's old and it's vintage video game classic video games you know so uh so we put we put up those letters and then after a while that since that color is you know kind of deep the uh, sun started fading it making it look kind of rough so a few days ago it, it, it had been painted about five years a few days ago we caulked it all up and got it all looking pretty good again and then started repainting it this morning but we had to rent that lift you could paint it from the ground but you wouldn't be able to paint around the letters since we put the letters over it you know so he had to paint all that by hand but the lift makes it easy. We rented that at Home Depot. I think it was, it's kind of expensive. It was like 300 bucks to have it delivered and picked up and rented. But it's worth it because uh, it makes the job really easy. Of course, that's easy for me to say because I'm just standing here watching. But uh, Joe's getting it done. We'll go around to the other side. This stuff's old, like I said, it's probably from the late 50s or early 60s, and so this metal is starting to separate from the wood. You can see there, and depending on how hot it is, it warps a little bit and stuff, because it's detached from the plywood under it. And so we're trying to get it all caulked up so that water can't get behind it and mess it all up. I don't know, I don't, I don't think you can even replace that stuff. I don't know where you'd ever get it. But uh, we had a problem there where it had split apart. We, tried to nail it back we had to put a, a board behind it and nail it back now behind this thing is probably the original 
front of the building, but we have no clue what shape it's in or anything. And if that's like red brick, you know, the original facade, it's going to look like crap over this orange brick, you know. So one of these days we'll probably have to take that slip cover off and just see what's under it and see if we can do anything to make it work with the bottom. But we might have to eventually uh, just redo the redo the bottom too, which will be a big, expensive pain and nightmare. And I like the slip cover. I'd leave it um, if it'll hold up, but I think eventually it's going to deteriorate more and more and more and more. Um, I don't know if anybody still makes those things where you could have it replaced or repaired or anything. So, But it is what it is. It's looking pretty good though. We like that the sign's big. I screwed up when I designed the logo. I made it, I wanted it to be two words or you know, two different colors, but I screwed up. I shouldn't have made that gray because it kind of blends in with the blue. I should have made it, I don't know, even white would probably be a little better, but if it ever gets where we want to change it, we could probably paint those letters pretty easy by just rolling them since they're out from the, uh, since they're out from the facade, we could just paint them a little bit. There you go. We're just trying to, uh, record this for posterity's sake. One of these days somebody will own this building 50 years from now and they'll say, what the hell were those guys doing? Why did they put that slip cover on there? You can see the side of it. It's literally just a, like a frame of plywood over the front of the building. So maybe one of these days we'll see what's behind it. I have yet to find one picture of this freaking building without that slip cover on it. So the building was built in probably the 20s. And then, uh, where did I get my hat, buddy? The, the building was built in the 20s. And then they, or maybe a little bit earlier, and then they added that slip cover probably in the late 50s. So I haven't found one picture yet of what it looked like before that slip cover was on there. So if anybody has one, let us know. 139 Caldwell Street, Rock Hill, South Carolina. All right, just a quick little video. See you on the next. All right, folks, that's how it ended up with a little less sun on it. You can see it a little better. Looks good. Came out a lot darker looking. When we painted it the first time, I think we put like two coats on it. And it, uh, you know, it was white underneath. So it kind of uh, absorbed it all. And uh, now we've got a good four coats on it. Or I guess you, I don't know if you can count it that way because two of the coats are five years old, but it looks much darker than it did the first time we painted it. Nice and clean again, looks good. So there you go, Joe's Video Games. <laughs>